Hello guys, welcome to a new video. We're going to be talking about the new uh, developmental manifesto for Harvest Crafting that came out uh, by Chris Wilson, um, supported by GGG, and it's going to basically talk about what they decided to do, what are they going to do with Harvest Crafting in the future, um, why they originally had Harvest Crafting, and things like that. Um, before we get started, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ding the bell for future videos, please. It helps grow the channel. Um, we are trying to post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and some in between if we have these random manifestos. Um, but, you know, it really helps out the channel, and if you always want to, you can always unsubscribe later. Never hurts to unsubscribe later, but all you have to do is just click the bell below. Um, before so let's go ahead and get started. So this is the developmental manifesto for harvest crafting All right, so we're going to be making some future changes to the harvest crafting with the release of 3.14 in April Again, that's a month away or just a little over a month depending on what part of April they decide to start in In short, we're concerned by how how deterministic some harvest crafts are and how easily players are crafting near perfect items Whenever they say, like, how easy something is, you can expect a nerf. <laughs> so, there's going to be a nerf. We just don't know exactly what it is. We'll, 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 let's see what we got. We don't feel that this is consistent with how Path of Exile's itemization should work. Again, nerfing words. Before we detail what changes are coming, we want to explain a bit about Harvest Initial Implementation and our design philosophy around items and crafting. Good. So we talked about how, uh, you know, in Path of Exile 2, they originally came out with Harvest League because they wanted to implement a new crafting method that was more powerful than the current crafting bench, right? Um, and so we knew that that was why they did Harvest League, and then we knew that they were going to take it out after because it was just so crazy. You know, you could create mere tier items with little to no investment, and it was just insane, right? So let's see what they have to say. Our initial plan for harvest crafting. Using crafting items like exalted orbs or chaos orbs on your gear is a powerful, risky, and exciting way to improve it. Okay, chaos orbs rerolls everything. Exalted orbs only adds a prefix or a suffix on there. So you're getting something random, right? You have no say on what happens to it. It's just a random chance. But because these items work equally well on both low and high level equipment, it's generally considered best to save them until you're crafting your end gear game. Exactly, you don't want to throw an exalted orb on a item level 56. Many players would even argue that it's best to save them and trade for already crafted items. Also, a very good argument. Remember, this is before harvest, okay? So you're trying to craft your own items with the chaos orb, chaos spamming, and then throw an exalted orb and hope you get a really good, um, like tier one physical by, you know, one in a million chance. <laughs> it's going to be cheaper probably just to buy the item. Uh, in either case, using valuable currency on items in your leveling gear is generally perceived as to be non-optimal. Okay, usually you aren't going to throw chaos orbs onto your gear. You're just going to find it on the ground and then put it on as you get it. When we were designing the crafting mechanics, that would be the reward system for Harvest League, we wanted to experiment with a system that allowed you to craft items while leveling, using the equivalent of powerful currency like Exalted Orbs, so that players could get the experience of using valuable currency items without feeling bad that they were missing out on future value. Our goal was to make a system that was so attractive that players would try to improve their items by throwing a few crafts at them in almost every area that they play. Which, you know, we did, right? So we were constantly going, as, at least I did, when you were going through, you know, you go into the harvest, you plant your seeds, and then as you get your seeds, you, you know, harvested them, and you use those crafts on the gear that you had, or gear that you had in your stash, right? That you were trying to hopefully get something good to roll. Towards the end of, towards the end of harvest development, it became clear that this was a very powerful crafting system. We had hit our goals, and then some. The question was whether we should preemptively nerf it because players saw it or try it out for a league at full strength. We decided to try it out. The data we'd get from players interacting with a very powerful crafting mechanic would be very helpful with our ongoing work deciding the appropriate power level of crafting opportunities in Path of Exile 2. Okay, there you go. See, that's why they did it, right? So they needed to do it because of Path of Exile 2. So we launched the powerful version of the system, including some crafts that modified items in more specific deterministic ways that we had allowed before. Again, targeted crafts like 
augment physical, remove physical, add remove physical, stuff like that. So we launched, uh, upon playing the league, the crafting side of it was an immediate hit. Of course, everyone loved it because you could get mere tier items like right away. Players easily filled gaps in their builds with leveling and made many, many mere worthy items. Yep. <laughs> I mean, when you can target craft, it's the best way to make money and you can also become super powerful too. You can, you can min-max your gear so easy. As a concern over this group, decisions started about how to adjust things when we eventually integrated it into the core game. Okay, so integrating Carvis into the core game in 3.3. So that was in 3.11. And then they took it out for the uh, Heist League and they brought it back in for Ritual League, of, which is this league of 3.13. We decided to integrate Harvest into the core game as map only content. Harvest crafting while leveling went fine during the Harvest League, but pretty much every league has some kind of item acquisition mechanic that occurs while leveling, so we don't didn't think it was necessary to have Harvest on top. Exactly. I mean, you don't need to have two itemization type of game styles at the beginning. Like, it, it's just too much, right? You already have Ritual, and then to have Ritual and Harvest on top of it, I, it's just silly. Just do, like, what they do with all the other ones. All the other ones, they bring it in sometime later in the axe, like, really later in the axe, or they start with the maps, right? Um, especially this league, because of the way that they have it set up. It, it just worked. It, it worked to have it in the maps. That's just how it worked. In the end game. Harvest crafting allowed the creation of some ridiculous items. Mostly via set deterministic crafts that interacted with specific types of mods. Okay, so add physical, remove physical. This had to be toned down and we had to choose between two ways of doing it. Either by removing the dangerous crafts or keeping them in as a rare possibility and then balancing by rarity. So they could either, you know, keep in the augments or in the add removes or the removes or, you know, the, the specific ones like that. They could either keep those in or they could um, or they could just get rid of them or they could keep them in. All right. Those are the two choices. Get rid of them or keep them. Uh, and they said we decided to do the latter, which is keep them. The good crafts would stay in the game as very rare outcomes. We didn't remove any crafting options other than the ones that related to process of growing a garden as they became redundant with the garden maintenance mechanic being removed. Those are ones like the, uh, you know, gain more life force when harvested, right? You don't need more life force because all the life force in there is going to be plenty for what you need. Um, so in 3.13 released an integrated version of Harvest where players stumble across groves full of crafts and hope that they get the most valuable deterministic ones. We hoped that this would still keep the valuable item, the most valuable crafting options available while limiting the most abusive crafts to just very lucky or successful players. Okay, so they, they made it rarer to get the augments. Now, if you played in 3.11, and you went to the crafting session of the TFT Discord. You could buy Add Remove Life for about 30 chaos <laughs> or less, right? Um, bulk was probably 30. Add Remove Life, I think, was actually about 20 or 15 if you only wanted like an individual one. Um, again, we had unlimited storage, right? So you just had to have, uh, you could only have three per, you know, little crafting station, but you could have infinite number of crafting stations. So that was kind of the difference, right? So we, you know, people had hundreds of harvest crafts that they had all stored and you had this huge bulk, right? Now we can only have 10 and we're looking at one X to three X in most cases for any of those kind of crafts, right? And you only get one. There, there's very rarely you're gonna find one that has three or more, right? I don't think I've seen anyone with three or more of a specific add remove, right? It's usually one or two. And most of the time it's just one, right? Because there's not enough space. There's only 10. So how are you supposed to have, you know, a big set number of these, right? So let's see what they say, right? So basically they made it uh, harder to get those crafts, which makes it for us. And they use TFT Discord, right? To get those crafts, made it more expensive. So analysis of integration into the core game. Okay, so now they can see, since we've already been in this league for a month and a half, they can now see how it's going. 
With Harvest integrated into core game of 3.3, players still made ridiculous items. Duh! Of course they would! You still had them in there! Even the crafts were made quite rare. Felt pretty common when the entire community was pulling them together and using them in the right items. Again, TFT Discord, right? So that's their way of... Because they can't say Discord, so... They don't want to bring out how people are doing this because they don't want people to do this. They don't want people to use Discord. They don't want people to share them. They want people to use their own and only their own, right? So they, you know, they didn't want this. And if they didn't want this, they should have just made it, you know, account bound, right? Instead of being able to be shared. But that's, you know... Maybe that's what they'll do. We'll see. The second issue was that players felt overwhelmed to get so many crafting options. It was possibly possible to get up to 100 or so crafts to be given to a player per grove. And this causes people to feel ob obliged to consume them. Otherwise, they would be wasted. Again, those are like the ones where you have, um, you know, use a map and get a three maps of a lower tier and there was like 15 of them and you're like what why so there was too many of them and you had four groves to choose from right in most cases you get four of them so you could pick one of each one and then you still had four of them you still had like 100 crafts or more per like per area and you're all like i only have 10 spots plus i already have like seven of them already stored so i have no space for any of these so i need to use them on something right so let's have a whole stash tab of random items that i can just randomly throw in there and use up all of them right hopefully that'll get something good it's just crazy you're spending all your time inside the harvest and you're not playing the game right so they said the result of both of these factor was that players had access to basically unlimited medium power crafts and had the RNG hunt the best crafts which they could then store for later. Players also expressed frustration that the most effective way to get the best item in Path of Exile was to join a Discord channel and try to trade for these items, these incredibly crucial crafts. Okay, so they did mention it. <laughs> it's like, you know, that's... If you're not part of the TFT Discord, then you're not going to get your items, right? It's very, very difficult to get your crafts that you want and those specific ones you want because you don't have the storage, right? So you to craft the best gear, you have to craft it in a certain order. And if you don't do it in a certain order, it will mess up the entire item and you have to start all over again. Well, trying to get that specific one in your harvest is like literally impossible. And even though you need those crafts for future ones on this specific item, you don't have the space in your in your stash to be able to hold them. So they're basically just wasted. So what do people do? Sell them on the TFT Discord. Hey, I mean, each harvest that you get, you can make anywhere from like one to 20 X, depending on if you got a really good harvest or if you got kind of a crappy one. I mean, it really was not that difficult. It was pretty easy to make money off of Harvest. And it still is. I mean, you're still selling it for 1 to 3x if you go on there. Especially like the life ones right now. Uh, the first part of this uh, that concerned us was that Harvest was cr critical in making the best items. And hence made many other game systems obsolete. Again, most people will use Harvest Crafting, right? That's just because you can target craft. So yes, did it make other ones obsolete? Yeah, I mean, who does the beast crafts anymore? I mean, you can use split and copy beast and the uh, imprint beast. But other than that, how many of you actually have gone into the menagerie and done any of the crafting other than that in on them? Maybe to get to get like one of the um auras that you can put on like aspect of the spider but i mean uh, other than that i don't think anyone uses beast crafting really other than those those certain circumstances right um the second part where it is inconvenient to trade them because far less of a problem if we can solve the first issue our problem with all of this is it can be summarized with the following thoughts. Why would I use a regular exalted divine a null orb when I can get one through the harvest that has the deterministic result? Exactly. So why would you want to use a an annulment orb when you need to remove a physical modifier on an item, right? You would just 
you wouldn't put the risk into your item. You would say, oh, I'm, I'm not going to spend this 10 chaos. I'd rather spend a, a 1x to remove physical because I it's guaranteed. And instead of me having a 1 in 6 chance of rolling off the one that I want to roll off, I now have 100% guaranteed to roll it off. Right, so it's worth it because if I roll off the one wrong one, then I'm going to be sending multiple X to get it back to where it was. So of course you're going to use the the harvest crafting to target, right? The entire rest of Path of Exile crafting system is somewhat redundant with harvest crafting in its current form. While we are glad we tried the experiment of keeping all the crafts and balancing by rarity, it's unfortunately going to have to change. Boom! Huge hammer. Nerf. <laughs> so they don't like basically also the crafting bench. I mean, you don't really use the crafting bench for like resistances or anything, right? Because you just add remove whatever resistance you need on there to get a higher resistance than what the crafting bench could give you. Okay. So Path of Exile's item of philosophy. This is important. This is why they're changing this. Okay. It is core. At its core, Path of Exile is a game about the acquisition of powerful items. Everyone's agreed with that, right? When we were designing Path of Exile, a critical aspect of item acquisition is that it is through random rather than deterministic means. When you defeat monsters and bosses, you receive random items. When you approach Cordero for a valuable item, you are offered a random one rather than one that you can control. When you craft an item, you receive a random modifier. In limited cases where you can choose a specific modifier, it's usually worse than that could be rolled randomly. Again, crafting bench. 35%, 38% on max res, or if you get the random one, 30, 48, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a big difference. In limited cases where you can choose a specific modifier, it's usually worse than the ones that could be rolled randomly. Even game systems specifically intended to involve deterministic, such as divination cards and incubators, still have amount of luck involved. It is also important that items are hard to perfect. Ideally, there is significant diminishing returns in the currency item crafting process, which lets most players get something good enough relatively easy and the expert players can show off with really good items that took a lot of effort to make obtaining perfect items is ideally close to impossible with very few players able to claim that they have such valuable treasures um i don't know if you ever watched mb extreme um before the harvest uh crafting but he tried to make a bleed blow uh, like the perfect bleed bow and it cost him like what a thousand x or more to try to get this item like it was just crazy because of how many exalted orbs you threw into it like no one has that currency okay other than like the 0.1 percent of the population like it's it's just insane how much currency you threw in just to make one item and how much does he have to spend on that through harvest crafting now 50x 60x <laughs> like a huge cut difference right uh, obtaining perfect items is ideally close to impossible with very few players able to curse about treasures we feel that the current state of harvest crafting runs against both of these important philosophies I agree with that okay yes it does there's no randomness in it. I mean, you have, what, 1 in 7 chance? You get the right resistance, 1 in 8 chance? I mean, that's not really a random, right? You're guaranteed a resistance, pretty much. We know that players would love to keep deterministic crafting in the game because it ensures them to complete their items far more quickly than they otherwise would. But then there would quickly be nothing left to achieve. Again, 100% true. After a harvest, after a month of harvest, you're already at your peak of your your character and there's nothing to build towards. It was an interesting experiment and we understood that some players will likely be attached to this level of incredibly easy crafting, but it's just not the path of exile we set out to make. Again, that makes it too much more, more like Diablo, right? Where everyone can craft the best gear really easily. So they didn't want that. They want this game to be hard. This sentiment was summed up by a member of our design team who recently said we don't want to make 
We don't want to take away the feeling of closing your eyes and exalting an item. Scared to see whether you ruined it or not. Again, they want that randomness in there. So, upcoming changes in Path of Exile 3.14. This is where we're going to see what's going to happen. So, in 3.14, we're making some changes. The first three are direct nerfs to harvest. The second two are improvements. It's also worth noting the Harvest Atlas passives have been adjusted to accommodate these changes. Get ready for the Harvest nerfs. Previously, every seed in the patch granted an instance of that seed's crafts. Now, only some of the seeds do, so you're getting far fewer of the crafts that were overwhelming people with their quantity. Again, if you ever look on the left side, it'll say like, you know, 17 of this type of seed, or 19 of this type of seed, or 25 of this type of seed that's what they're talking about okay so instead of getting 19 crafts with that specific seed you're only going to get a couple of them higher tier seeds are closer to one to one ratio so if you have ones that only have like one or two you're pretty much going to be guaranteed of having one of them on there right some mods that had overly deterministic behaviors have been removed again those are going to be all of the augments add removes <laughs> They're all gone. These include all annulment mods, other than the ones that remove a mod that isn't of a specific type before adding one of that type. So they removed everything but the non to something, right? So remove non-life to life. They kept all of those in. Remove non-physical to physical. So they kept those in, which is good. It's gonna make it more challenging to get the crafts that we need and might have to do some like roundabout type of uh, crafting methods to get the items we want, but it should still be possible to get them. It's just gonna be more difficult, right? So if you have an item that has like all physical items, it should be pretty good. Um, Other than the ones that remove mods that are specific type before adding the other type and all type specific divine mobs. So they also removed randomize. Sorry, there's no more randomized lightning. There's no randomized life anymore. It's they're gone. Crafts that added mods of specific types like physical modifiers, for example, to items can now only be applied to non influenced items. OK, so there goes the explode chest, right? You can't you can't get an explode chest through harvest crafting anymore. Except for existing mods that apply to influenced mods uh, to an influenced items. So you cannot get an explode chest, essentially. That's how it goes. There's the nurse, guys. That's it's going to be bad. The chance of encountering a portal to the sacred grove of the map has increased by 60%. Okay, you think, oh, 60%, that's huge. Well, it's only at 5% right now, so 6% is an additional 3. So it's now going to be at 8%. Okay, so one out of, you know, 12 maps. Heart of the Grove Encounter is now a map fragment that sometimes drops from Tier 4 Harvest Boss. That's nice. Instead of randomly appearing in place of a normal Harvest gear Grove, this allows you to trade the encounter if you don't feel up to it. And it means that finding the Heart of the Grove when you're in a map with difficult mods doesn't lead to an impossible encounter. Again, yeah, like one you have like extra life, extra damage, extra damage, extra damage, extra damage, extra attack speed, extra AOE, <laughs> like on a map, and you get heart of the grove, and you're like, oh, there's no way I can do this because this boss has you know five trillion life and it one shots everyone. So they got rid of that, right? So now we have these fragments. That's that's nice. That's very nice. And I do like that they increased uh, the frequency of the the sacred grove. Again, they're going to be able to make it. You can still use the um, you know the Oshabi and still use the uh, map mods as well to help increase the percentage too. So you should still be able to target farm hard of the grove too, and harvesting. Overall, this is undoubtedly a heavy nerf to high-end cr harvest crafting. High-end? I wouldn't say it's high-end. I mean, most people are able to do harvest crafting, but high-end, I guess. I guess they mean high-end by meaning like the exalted orb type of uh, crafts, like the augments, right? Um, 
But we strongly believe that this is the path of Exile's best interest going forward, and that there are still a lot of compelling harvest crafts that make the grove worth running at any point in map aggression. So basically, how are we going to see this turn out? I don't know. What do you think down below? Um, I think that it's it's going to be turned into kind of like beast crafting. I think there's still going to be some crafting that's going to happen, but I don't think it's going to be anything like it is right now, right? So we don't have those specific ones that we want, right? We still have the non to whatever, but they got rid of all of the same to same. So they got rid of all the physical to physical, um, lightning to lightning, you know, those type of roles. So what are they going to do going forward? Exactly what they said. So they're taking those out. Um, they're making it so you don't have as many crafting options, right? So if there's one that says like 17 seeds, you're only going to get like three or four crafts out of it. Uh, however, if you have one that says one or two seeds, you're most likely going to get one or two out of those seeds. Again, they're removing the most valuable ones. So I don't know what's going to happen, but don't forget to like, subscribe and ding the bell for future videos. And until next time, guys, peace out.